Hello everyone, my name is Jillian and I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the sensing blocks today. We'll be using these four blocks. So this first block, mouse down, checks whether you are pressing down on the mouse or not, like if you're clicking on the screen. The next blocks, mouse X and mouse Y, have your mouse's X and Y coordinates. So for example, my sprite's X coordinate right now is negative 84 and my sprite's Y coordinate is negative 12. So now we're going to set up a code where my sprite is going to go to a set location or coordinate on the screen. So I'll drag out when the flag is clicked from events to start my code. And then in motion, I'm going to drag out the go to X and Y block. It's right here. One way to move your sprite to a set location is if it goes to where the mouse pointer is. So the blocks I showed you before, mouse X and mouse Y, can help find my mouse's location. So instead of a specific number for X and Y, I'll drag these blocks in. So X is mouse X and Y is mouse Y. Then I'll put a forever loop around it so it doesn't go to my mouse only once. So now when I press the green flag, my sprite moves with my mouse at all times. To make it not follow my mouse all the time, I can put in code so that it only goes to my mouse when I'm clicking on the screen. Now the mouse down block will be useful. As I said before, the mouse down checks whether you are pressing on your mouse. I want the cat to go to my mouse if I'm clicking on the screen. So I'm going to drag out a conditional if then block, put it inside the forever loop, and then drag the mouse down block to fit inside. Now when I press the green flag, and if I click on the screen, my sprite will go to my mouse's X and Y coordinates. Now I've already set up a small game to show you an example of how this can be useful. I put the sprite with the code for my game in my backpack. And you don't need to pay attention to how I did the code for my other sprite for this video, but to let you know what's going on, I set up this Apple sprite to be going to random positions on the screen. And if the cat touches the apple, then the score will go up by one. So I'll start this game. Oh, we need to add the score in to show the score. See, so using the location of your mouse X and Y can be useful when creating games. And this is just one example. Now the last block you're going to be learning about in this video is the set drag mode draggable or not draggable, which lets you change the sprite's draggability. So if I set my drag mode to draggable, I can drag the sprite around by pressing down on the mouse and moving. And if I set it to not draggable, the sprite doesn't move when I start my game if I try to move it. So for example, I can make it so if my space bar is pressed, I can drag my cat sprite and if not, it won't be draggable. And I got rid of my other code, so now I can get to the apple and gain points by dragging the cat instead. So now when I start the game, I'm not pressing on the space bar, and as you can see, I can't drag the sprite. But now I press my space bar, and I can drag the sprite. And I can get to the apple. That's it for this video. I hope this helps you add some new skills to future Scratch projects.